As this is the last day for seniors tonight, we bring you the final show of the 2021-2022 school year. I'm a very voiceless Lexi Ockletree, and joining me as a news anchor for the first time is Aiden Ziegler. Thanks, Lexi. And we've tried to do this whole season. Tonight, we're bringing you local and national stories, lighthearted and serious stories, and perhaps even some news you missed. So stay tuned and enjoy. We begin tonight with a sweet goodbye. After 84 years of elementary and middle school education, Evans City Elementary will permanently close its doors as the new Ermine Crest Elementary School will be set to open for the 2022-2023 school year. Evans City was known to provide educational excellence as 574 students were enrolled in grades K through 4th, and 492 were in 5th and 6th grade. On May 9th, the elementary and middle school opened their doors for public tours to give past students and community the opportunity to revisit their school and reminisce on old memories created there. For elementary students, though, zoning and relocating their next years of education to different schools has become a concern ever since the announcement of its closure. Students who attended the Evans City, Middle, Evans City Elementary School can be relocated to Hain Elementary, CBE, or Ermine Crest Elementary School for the next school year. The zoning idea has since been approved by the school board as it is believed to ease the capacity within the other schools and expand facility space for future years. The new Ermine Crest Elementary School being currently built right off of Ermine Road in Cranberry Township will be open within the next few months as it welcomes its first new wave of elementary and middle school students. Moving into much older students, as we're inching closer to finishing the school year, the CHS Narrative Film class is currently finishing their final projects. The three groups have been through several ups and downs throughout their journey producing their films. The groups have been filming their films inside and outside of school, rescheduling and relocating their films to get the best outcome for their movie. We've gathered two people from each group to explain more about their movie and now how they've overcome their challenges. So our movie is about this girl who's going through a breakup and it's just kind of her realizing that she just needs to be by herself and that she doesn't need anyone to make her happy and that sometimes you just got to accept what happens even though you don't like the outcomes of it. Uh, Welcome to the show is basically about this character named Michael. Uh, he, is, he wakes up and he's suddenly trapped in this sitcom world and he has to try to get out basically. Um, our movie is about a girl who loses her shirt and wants to get it back. She basically goes insane. Yeah. <laughs> definitely scheduling um, and definitely trying to find maybe locations as well, like some locations or also times where like everyone was like not busy. Well, scheduling, that was a big one, trying to get everyone at once, at, like in one place at the same time. Schedule changes, weather, the freak snowstorm that happened over spring break kind of messed up a lot. Things just kept happening and they, had, they couldn't do it anymore. We just had to keep changing people up and everything. And then I bet Molly, she's experienced so much editing problems. We had to organize a marching band for one of our scenes, which was a lot of people. We had one shoot where our entire group was together. Just one shoot, that was, that was it for um, the whole group being there. Thankfully, we still got the other clips we needed. We want the audience to learn that um, everyone as themselves are perfectly fine and, and you should be content with yourself and proud of yourself as who you are um, and you don't necessarily need another person to tell you that or you don't need to rely on another person um, to believe that about yourself. Life goes on, you know, you, you get broken up with but you just gotta keep going. And appreciate things while you have them. Don't be crazy. And don't date people who are crazy because they will steal your cat. <laughs> The SV Film Fest, this is actually the 10th annual, it should be the 11th, but we had an off year in 2020, um, is taking place at the Strand Theater in Zillianopel. We're happy to be back there again this year. It's an awesome venue, and we've done this, as I've said, 10 times or nine times before, I guess, and um, we're really excited to do that. I feel like I always try to tell my students that you should care about the grade, but really what's more important is the work that you put out there for um, the public to see, and I think that's a really good motivator for, for students to make great work. They should go to this film fest just kind of showing that at any age or anything that you do, you can do whatever you want. I mean, we all want to be filmmakers one day. We want to be actors, actresses, producers. To see um, all these great films and great like young filmmakers like take their steps up to their future careers. And I mean, sure, it might not be in film, 
but it's all our passion to make these films like that and it would be really awesome if people were to see those. People should attend the Film Fest because it is just a really nice celebration of the end of the year. It's a great celebration of work, of artistry, and there's really nothing else like it. There are lots of concerts, there are lots of sporting events that you can go to, but there's really nothing that celebrates film and media and animation and shorts and things like that um, in the public. It's, just, it's a school event, but it's outside schools. Because it's really cool and you'll see really cool films. It, yeah, just it's gonna be fun. Hmm. And it's also it's fun too. Like who wouldn't want to watch a film about things that we can all relate to? Even have something to do and have a nice laugh with everyone. And it's it's a great way to celebrate. It's two days after graduation and just a nice nice way to um, end the year and to bring in summer. Don't forget to join us at the show next Sunday at the Strength Theater at 7 p.m. for this great end of the year celebration of film, artistry, and community. And one thing that we all hope to celebrate at the end of the year was the end of the COVID-19 pandemic. While many of us have decided to be done with the pandemic, we all know the pandemic is not done with us just yet. This week, top Biden administration health officials warned that rising levels of COVID infections across the country should prompt people to take more protective measures. As COVID infections creep up to nearly 100,000 a day, CDC officials such as Rochelle Walensky encourage people living in communities designated yellow and orange to consider wearing masks indoors again. Officials also warn that current infection rates are most likely grossly undercounted since so many people are engaging in home testing. All of this comes as the U.S. has recently surpassed the grim milestone of one million lost to the pandemic. And now a quick detour to sports. Will Tom Brady ever retire from football? Two months ago, we told you about Tom Brady coming out of retirement to play at least one more year uh, for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Brady is still playing with his putting on his career to rest after the 2022-2023 season, but he will now be switching to his positions in the stadium as he will be broadcasting for sp uh, Fox Sports as soon as his playing career ends. Fox News was first to report the details of the contract. Brady signed a whopping $375 million contract for 10 years. This is a bigger contract than Brady has ever signed during his 22 years playing quarterback with the New England Patriots and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Fans all around the world are hoping Brady does an outstanding job as a broadcaster, or else he would be a bust for Fox Sports. And now taking a dramatic turn from sports, we look at one of the most hotly debated of all American issues, abortion. We all know it's difficult to get an objective perspective on this issue, and while this is a touchy subject to tackle in high school broadcast, it is an issue that is undoubtedly worth researching and understanding the implications on health care and politics. Recently, the U.S. Supreme Court leaked a draft on the topic of the heavily polarizing case of Roe v. Wade. This leak entails the potential of the Supreme Court to overturn the original ruling. This leak has evoked strong emotions from both sides of the political spectrum as tens of thousands take to the streets to make their opinion. This controversy comes ahead of the midterms set to take place later this year. Let's check with Caleb regarding locals opinions on the topic. This past week, the U.S. Supreme Court has leaked a draft on the potential overturning of the infamous Roe v. Wade abortion case. This leak reveals the Supreme Court's intentions to outright overturn the decision that was originally made back in 1973. The Supreme Court confirmed that the draft was genuine, however stated, quote, it does not represent a decision by the court or the final position of the members of the issue of the case, end quote. What are the implications of this decision being potentially overturned? If this decision does get overturned, it would give individual states power to choose to to what extent they wish to keep abortions. The potential for this court case getting overturned is very likely, and there is currently a conservative majority in the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is poised to make a final decision on this matter in June, and I asked several students and teachers their opinion on the matter and what they had to say. My initial reaction to this is simple. How are we taking steps backward in human rights? It's really disappointing. I thought this was like kind of a bad idea overall because this could just lead to a lot of dangers and um, it can lead to even more rights being taken away. It really shouldn't be um, illegal because it it helps a lot of people that made a mistake in their life that maybe they were un under the influence of drugs. I was a bit surprised that so many people um, support abortion so I would have thought that they would have said um, that abortion is legal instead of illegal. A little bit interesting. I mean, it's been like, what, 30, 20 some years since it first happened, the court case? A lot of questions as to why. It's being voted on by a lot of white men, and if you have a uterus, why are you voting on laws for people with a uterus? I think that abortion should be completely legal. I think that every woman 
should have that choice for themselves? I think they will overturn it because a lot of people have been using the abortion route for a long time and it, it'll just help a lot of young adults. Personally, I'm not sure whether or not the court will overturn it or not. They could overturn it as they're talking about it now. And abortion has become more illegal, but at the same time, states are also um, allowing abortion to be legal. I hope that it's not. I hope that it's not overturned. I hope that it stays legal, yeah. Do I believe it will be overturned? Yes, of course. And that is simply because there's a c huge conservative majority on the Supreme Court. Ultimately, I don't know if it will be overturned. Unfortunately, we have a lot of white males in Congress and in the Senate, and it genuinely is terrifying. I think that ultimately they probably won't, because it may look like right now that they're going to, but a lot of people are very upset, and this will lead to so many future things that they probably will not actually overturn it. How do I believe it will impact future families? I think that adoption centers will definitely be overwhelmed and on top of that, kids will have the possibility of being born into abusive households or households that don't have the abilities to take care of them at the moment. How do I think it would impact future families? I think that it would, it would impact the children's view on life because it would be weird if their parents were closer to their age than any of their friends' parents. Personally, I think it will affect families in the future if abortion becomes um, illegal. Um, babies will probably go up for adoption and um, they'll also, the children will become not less cared for, but the parents who really needed the abortion, they might not have the money to take care of the child. I do believe that this will have a major impact on families. I believe that there's going to be a lot of people who you see getting, you know, under the radar abortions, a lot of people going to other countries for abortions. This will put a lot more kids into foster care, which can have a negative effect on them and the kids who are kept. And there will be like, a lot of trauma dealt with an unwanted child, so it probably will just have a lot of issues on the actual children. The final ruling of this case is expected in June. If they overturn, if the overturning were to go through, this would inevitably prompt a rush in some states to enact anti-abortion legislation and a rift between pro and anti-abortion states. The only certainty in all of this, whatever the decision may be, is the further polarization of the media. Thank you for that, Caleb. Last week, we'll take a look at our video production peers along with Lexi and I, who will be graduating to Kenyard Education in film and media fields next fall. While Seneca Valley video production students and the SVTV After School Club have had scores and talented artists and volunteers of all levels this year, we take a moment to recognize those who graduate next week. There are 10 seniors who have taken any upper level production classes or who have volunteered SVTV broadcast. And among those, six will be going to college to continue their film in video production or related fields. Let's hear from them. So my name is Aiden Ziegler. Um, I'm going in for a communications degree at Penn State. So I'm Lexi Ockeltree. I'm going to Point Park University to study cinema production and multimedia communication. I'm Lauren Priester, and I'm going to Hofstra University for film studies and production. My name is Owen Nichols, and I am going to Point Park University next year to study animation. My name is Molly Sia. I'll be attending the University of Central Florida for film. My name is Emily Lopez. I am going to Point Park University, and I'm majoring in cinema production. Uh, so what I want to do in college is that I would like to go into film and broadcast and television production. I hope to just really get internships and get more hands-on experience with like more equipment. We'll learn how to produce more special effects within animation and learn different types of animation styles. I think I'm looking most forward to like focusing on film um, and all the aspects of it, like those being all of your classes rather than um, taking like statistics classes and such. <laughs> I think like shows and movies would be cool. Music videos are also really cool. I'm looking forward to meeting so many new people and just being able to make my dreams come true. I've been dreaming to make movies since my sophomore year and the fact that I'll be able to be working with Netflix or Hulu or HBO Max in like three years time, it just blows me away and I'm just very excited to be a part of a set. I feel like I want to do like all aspects of communication. I like broadcast and I like making films, but I'm not too sure exactly which way I want to go yet. My dream job is to become an animator or an or a graphic designer. Well, I love editing, so 
a dream job would, would be to edit, but I also love being on set. That's really, really fun, um, being in the production world of it. So I don't really know. We hope to keep you updated on the work of our fantastic soon-to-be graduates this future. Thank you to all who have watched our show over the, these past several months. It has been an honor bringing you news to your screens, and we hope you've enjoyed our show, and we hope that you spread the word for the future about the Seneca Scout and the class that produces it. CHS Broadcast News. Thank you so very much, and have a great summer. This is Ian Ziegler, signing off. And this is Lexi Aquafri, signing off. Thank you so much. This is Wagalicious.